Rafer Alston isn't your normal NBA player. His upbringing into the limelight was different from any other player who made it to the NBA. What wasn't traditional about Alston is what led to an entire movement for basketball on the streets. This was known as the An One Mixtape Tour. From An One Streetballer to NBA Star, here's the story of Rafer Alston. Let's begin with the An One Mixtape Tour. Alston was a standout basketball player in high school and continued to play at the collegiate level. He went to three separate colleges, all of which were rather small in size. His most recent college experience was at Fresno State, where he redshirted his first year. Alston scored 11 points and dished out 7.3 assists per game in 33 games played. These numbers weren't horrible, but they weren't the kind of numbers that would usually cause NBA recruiters to leap out of their seats in excitement. A low-quality mixtape, allegedly issued by Alston's high school coach, would eventually cause everyone to leap out of their seats, and it would be the thing that would get everyone out of their chairs. It was on this mixtape that Alston's outstanding streetball moves were highlighted. This includes devastating crossovers and other quick dribble techniques that would fool any defender who got in his way. When Alston brought the ball up the court, he would also perform a skip dribble. Skip to my Lou became a classic streetball nickname as a result of this performance. As a result of the film, Alston was invited to join the An One Mixtape Tour, which consisted of a group of the top streetballers in the country who traveled across the country doing events. Alston soon established himself as the instigator and finest fancy trick player on the tour, with everyone clamoring to catch a glimpse of his best moves. The An One Mixtape Tour was featured on ESPN and ESPN2 under the title of the show Streetball, which was broadcast on both networks. While traveling to different locations, the team would not only engage in street basketball, but would also recruit new players to join them on their journey. A total of 10 volumes of the mixtape tour were eventually released by N1, which helped Alston achieve legendary reputation in the streets. But would his abilities be sufficient for an NBA team to come knocking on his door? Next up, his career in the NBA. Because of his abilities, the NBA took notice of Alston, and the Milwaukee Bucks selected him 39th overall in the second round of the 1998-1999 NBA Draft. In Alston's first couple of seasons in the league, things didn't go as planned. He started only a few games for the Bucks in his first three seasons before being traded to the Toronto Raptors for a season and then to the Miami Heat for another year, where he received a bit more playing time. After spending one more season with the Raptors, Alston found a new home with the Houston Rockets, where he achieved his greatest level of personal accomplishment. Alston was the starting point guard for the Rockets for three and a half seasons during his time there. During his time with the Rockets, he averaged 12.6 points, 5.7 assists, and 1.4 steals per game. To foid the build left by Jameer Nelson's injury during the 2008 season, he was moved to the Orlando Magic midway through the year. Alston stepped in to take over the starting point guard position and performed admirably. In 29 games, he had an average of 12 points and 5.1 assists per game. Alston was the starting point guard for the Orlando Magic, and the team advanced to the NBA Finals while he was there. The Magic were set to meet Kobe Bryant and the Los Angeles Lakers, but Alston's high would come to an abrupt halt when the Magic were defeated. As part of a contentious decision, the Magic prematurely brought back Jameer Nelson in the Finals and gave him the starting job over Alston. The Lakers eventually defeated the Magic 4-1, marking the beginning of the end for Alston's NBA career. Alston retired from the NBA after the season. He was moved to the New Jersey Nets, where he appeared in 27 games before being waived by the team. He signed with the Miami Heat once again, and played in 25 games before being suspended for skipping a practice and a game due to a scheduling conflict. The suspension was initially only for one game, but it was quickly extended to include the remainder of the season. Later on, Alston was released, and he went on to play for two different leagues before finally retiring in 2012. While Alston was a decent player in the NBA, he always will be remembered as a legend in the world of streetball. Well guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to Swish Position, and hit that notification bell so that you never miss a video. We'll see you guys next time.